Hi, this is Trevor Sullivan, a Microsoft MVP for Windows PowerShell. You can find me online at trevorsullivan.net or twitter.com slash pcgeek86. I look forward to engaging with you. In today's presentation, what we're going to talk about is how to configure bi-directional communication between Azure Automation and Slack. The nice thing about Azure Automation and Slack is that they both support webhooks. Webhooks are essentially HTTP REST calls that enable services to securely communicate together. So what we're going to do in this example is we're going to create a custom integration for Slack that allows us to run a custom command and invoke an Azure Automation Runbook. In response, the Azure Automation Runbook is also going to be able to send a message back to the Slack channel so that it can notify users about occurrences inside the platform. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is create a resource group inside of Microsoft Azure. So we're inside the Azure portal at portal.azure.com. Uh, we already have a subscription set up, um, but aside from that, everything else is from scratch here, right? So we're going to call this resource group Trevor Sullivan Slack. And the reason that we need a resource group is because resource groups contain resources inside Azure, right? So uh, it's basically a management container. So when we create a resource group, there's nothing inside of it until we click the Add button. So we'll click the Add button, and the service we want to add is Azure Automation. So let's just go ahead and search for Automation. And if we choose Automation, we can just click on the first item in that list, which is an Automation account, and click Create. Now the Automation account is what enables the Runbook and Desired State Configuration functionality inside of Microsoft Azure. So let's just go ahead and give the Automation account a name. So we'll call it Trevor Sullivan. In Slack. We'll go over to the resource group, and because it didn't already pick up the resource group that we created, we're just going to go ahead and scroll down and find the Trevor Sullivan Slack resource group. So we need to specify a region, and Azure Automation only supports several regions out of the many that are available in Azure. So we'll choose the East US 2 region, and we'll click the Create button. Now, after we create the automation account, what we're going to do is we're going to import a runbook that already has integration configured between Slack and Azure Automation. There's just a couple of steps that we have to run through to actually connect our specific automation account or our runbooks with the uh, Slack service. So what we're going to do is just refresh the view here, open up the resource group blade, and we should now have a new automation account. Sure enough, there it is. It's called Trevor Sullivan Slack. It's been successfully created. Thank you for the notification there. Now, what we're going to do is import a runbook. So it already says that we have one runbook, but it's just a tutorial runbook. And what we want to do is actually go out to browse the gallery. So what this is going to enable us to do is browse the TechNet Script Center and search for runbooks. So if we search for Slack, you'll see that there's a runbook out there called Azure Automation Two-Way Slack Integration with Webhooks. So what this runbook essentially allows us to do is just send messages back and forth between the service. Slack can call Azure Automation Runbooks, and Azure Automation can send messages back to the Slack channel. So we're just going to uh, kind of scroll through the code here, take a look at it. There's a bunch of documentation that you can read on your own, but we're just going to click the import button. And we're going to have to give it a name, so we'll just call it Slack, and then we're going to give it a description. So this automation runbook enables integration between Azure Automation and Slack. Okay, great. So let's click OK, and that'll go ahead and import the gallery item into our automation account, which we've already created. So we're just going to go back to the automation account itself. Now you can see we have two runbooks in the environment. Uh, there's the one called Slack, so we'll click on Slack, and we'll click the Edit button to actually view the code for the Slack runbook. Okay, so we're just going to kind of step through things really quick here. And so basically, we have this parameter block that accepts a parameter called webhook data. Now, this is Azure Automation's way of basically accepting data from an external webhook call. Next, I wrote a function called get Slack parameter that parses out the query string that comes from Slack, and it actually parses it into a PowerShell hash table. So you actually get a nice key value pair that looks a lot nicer than the long query string that they send to you. Okay, so we just parse out the Slack parameters, and then there's another function here called send Slack message. And you can actually use this function yourself to send messages back to a specific channel or a specific user, uh, customize the message that goes through, and so on. Now, the important thing to note here is that this function, get or send, send Slack message, depends on an automation variable inside of our asset store called Slack incoming webhook. So we're actually going to go ahead and set that up. Okay. 
So uh, let's go ahead and scroll down here and you'll see that there's several if blocks. The if blocks are basically looking at the text of the message that's coming from Slack and it's checking it against a specific set of criteria. So I've actually set up three custom commands here. One is called arm list groups, which is going to list the resource groups inside of my Azure subscription. The way it does that is using the Azure Resource Manager PowerShell module. And one more dependency that we have here, just to call it out, is that we have an, a PS credential inside of our asset store called Azure Admin. Now, because we created a new Azure Automation account, it does not have that credential defined in there. So you actually need to go define that for your own environment, okay? So I'm just gonna be configuring an Azure uh, Active Directory account to authenticate to Azure. Okay, so the key thing that we have to do before we move on here is publish the runbook. And publishing the run runbook is important because that's how we enable the webhook functionality. The runbook is only in the draft state when you initially import it from the gallery, but you need to click the publish button so that the uh, runbook can be executed in production. So now we're going to provide a webhook name and we're gonna provide an expiration date just for security purposes. Uh, so we're going to specify a few days out there, and we're going to copy the URL to the clipboard. Okay, now we've copied the URL to the clipboard. We don't have to configure any parameters, so we'll just click OK. And then finally, we'll just click Create to actually create the webhook that enables Slack to call this runbook. Now, let's go ahead and, while we're thinking of it, go over to our Slack configuration. And we're gonna to go to custom integrations, and then we're going to choose slash commands, okay? Now I've already set up a couple of examples here before, but we're just going to add a new configuration. And we're gonna call this command Azure RM, okay? So every time that we call the slash Azure RM command, that's going to enable us to call our runbook. So I've already copied that runbook uh, webhook URL, and so I'm going to paste that into the URL for this custom command. So every time we call slash Azure RM, it's going to invoke this URL, which is the URL to invoke the webhook for that runbook. Now, Azure Automation expects a post message from HTTP, so that's uh, what we're gonna leave that as. We're gonna customize the name here and call it Azure Resource Manager. And then we're going to uh, add the command to the auto completion list inside of Slack. So what we're gonna do is just say this command invokes a runbook in Azure Automation, and then we're going to provide a usage hint. So we'll say slash Azure RM arm list groups, right? So that's an example call. We're just gonna copy this description field here, down here, and save the integration. Great, so now we've saved the new integration for our custom slash command. Now we also have to provide an incoming webhook for, uh, for Slack. So we're gonna go back to custom integrations, go to incoming webhooks, and then we're going to add a new configuration. So this is what's going to enable Azure Automation to send a message back to Slack, okay? So we're gonna choose the channel, general, and then we'll say add incoming webhooks integration. Now there's a bunch of parameters that you can configure on the incoming webhook, such as the username or links or customize the appearance and so on and so forth, but we're not gonna worry about that for now. What we're, we're gonna do is take that incoming webhook URL and put it into our automation account. So if you remember, the runbook here depends on a variable asset called uh, Azure admin for the PS credential, but then we also have a dependency under the send Slack message command uh, for a variable, automation variable in our asset store called Slack incoming webhook. So let's go ahead and go back to our automation account. We'll go to the asset store. We'll define the PS credential as well as the variable. So we just copied the uh, URL for the Slack incoming webhook variable. So let's go ahead and just define this variable and we'll uh, paste in the value under value and then under description, this variable enables Azure Automation to invoke Slack commands. Okay, great. So now we're gonna encrypt that variable because the webhook value is kind of a sensitive uh, value. So we're going to encrypt that. We're gonna come back to our asset store here and then we're gonna go to under credentials and we're gonna add the Azure admin credential that enables our Azure Automation Runbook to actually authenticate to Azure Resource Manager and perform automation tasks inside there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type my Azure Active Directory username and then my Azure Active Directory password and it looks like they don't match. 
So let's go ahead and make sure that they do match and click the Create button. So now we've created the assets that are necessary. We've uh, configured the Slack integration for the incoming and the custom slash command, which is the outgoing uh, webhook integration. So now that we've set this all up, let's go ahead and test out the command. So if we go back to the runbook, there were three commands that we had available to us in our if statements. And we can also add more, right? So you can actually take this runbook and you can customize it yourself with your own automation command. So let's just click on the edit button here and that's going to open up our text editor for the runbook and then we'll scroll down here to the bottom and you'll see these commands like new arm group and del arm group and list arm groups or arm list groups a little bit inconsistent let's just call it list arm groups and then we'll save that and then publish it so that'll be a little bit more consistent now so it'll be list arm groups okay so now that we've configured this integration let's go ahead and switch back over to slack and check it out we now have an azure rm command inside of slack so let's call list arm groups and see what happens so let's talk about what's happening while it's running behind the scenes here so it complained because it didn't receive a, an immediate response from azure automation but normally azure automation is going Going to send it a confirmation that it received the message from Slack, right? And it'll actually give you the job ID. So in this case, that didn't immediately work, but that's okay. So what we're doing is we're going out, we're invoking the webhook, and what the webhook does is it calls the Slack runbook that we imported into our automation account. And it sends this payload of information along with it so that Azure Automation knows what the message was, or where the message came from. It's got a validation token in there so you can check to make sure it came from your Slack account instead of somebody else's Slack account. And so there's, there's all this data that gets passed from Slack over to Azure Automation. So Azure Automation receives that webhook call and it says, okay, I'm going to create a new job, a new background job inside of Azure Automation that kicks off that runbook. So that runbook is going to look for that command we ran called list arm groups. It's going to authenticate to Microsoft Azure using that Azure admin credential that we put into our asset store. And then look, sure enough, it lists out all of the resource groups that are inside of our Azure subscription. So now let's test out the other commands. So we also had an Azure RM new arm group command that'll create a new resource group. So let's call it Trevor Sullivan dash from Slack. Okay. And we're going to deploy that into, let's say the West US region, and we'll just hit enter. And so now we're telling Azure Automation, and there's the job, the job instance ID that it just created. We're telling Azure Automation, hey, we want to run the same runbook, right? We're calling the same runbook, but we're passing a different message. And so based on that if condition down towards the bottom, it's going to go out and create a new resource group instead of listing the resource groups. Now let's go ahead and go to the Azure portal and take a look at what that looks like. So we're going to go under the Slack runbook, or you could go under the automation account itself and look at jobs for all runbooks. Um, but if we click on the Slack runbook specifically, there's a jobs button there, and that'll show us the jobs just for this one runbook. Now here is the first job that ran that listed out the resource groups. Now what's cool is that the output from the job is actually stored inside of Azure Automation. So if we click on output, we can see the output from uh, Azure Automation in here as well as in the Slack channel. Now the thing is, is that the Slack, the message received in the Slack channel is not necessarily the same as the runbook output, right? Because we actually have a custom function that's sending a message directly to Slack and it's not necessarily emitting it to the Azure Automation output. So the reason that you're seeing okay there is because, and not the actual Slack message with all the resource groups, is because we sent the message directly to Slack instead of emitting it from the runbook, which is totally fine. You have the option of doing one or both. So now our second job here, uh, unfortunately the portal hasn't updated here yet, but if we click on the job, we can see that it's completed. And you probably saw the desktop notification pop up saying that Azure Automation successfully created the ARM resource group named Trevor Sullivan dash from Slack in the West US region. Well, the question is, do we believe it? Well, let's go out to the Azure portal. We'll click on resource groups here, and then we'll actually search for resource groups that are named Slack to see if it actually created it or not. So sure enough, there is the Trevor Sullivan dash from Slack, and it's been deployed into the West US region. So great, now we have this new management container, this new resource group that's been deployed in the West US region, and we actually did that using Slack messages. So now we're gonna test the third and final command that I currently have configured in my runbook, and do slash Azure RM, 
and then we're going to say del arm group and then we have to pass it the name of the resource group that we want to delete so we're going to delete the one that we just created so slash azure rm del arm group trevor sullivan dash from slack hit enter and we should get yet a third job id back from azure automation so azure automation took that webhook it kicked it off a third time it's the same runbook but it's following a different logic path based on the uh, variable that we entered or the the parameter that we entered inside the message right so let's go ahead and come back to our resource group here we'll open up the automation account and then we'll get a list of the runbooks here sorry the azure portal is a little bit jumpy at times so let's just go ahead and click on runbooks and then we'll click on the slack runbook and then we will click on jobs and we should have a third job showing up in here so click on jobs the jobs Blade is going to open up. Sure enough, we have a third job running. Let's just do a quick cr cross-reference to make sure that it's actually the same one. Sure enough, the job ID is 12577DF4. And if we switch back to Slack, 12577DF4. And so obviously that's the right job ID. That job is running in the background. And in just a moment, that job will hopefully complete successfully and delete the resource group that we created from Slack. Only now we're deleting it from Slack. Okay. So let's go ahead and just click on the job summary here and see if it's finished yet. So the status is still running. The runbook jobs sometimes take a few minutes to complete. Don't sweat it. It'll get there. It'll run eventually. And it will send us a message back to our Slack channel confirming that it ran successfully. And then once this job is run successfully, uh, there's the desktop notification now. So we'll go ahead and just get rid of that notification. And now we'll come back to resource groups. It'll refresh the view. And now we're going to search for Slack again. And what should have happened is that resource group should have been deleted. And sure enough, the Trevor Sullivan dash from Slack resource group no longer exists inside this subscription. So um, that's basically just kind of an overview about how to set up two-way integration between Azure Automation and Slack. The really cool thing is that the TechNet Script Center gallery is integrated directly with Azure Automation. So again, when you set up a new automation account inside your resource group and you come out to runbooks and you want to import a new runbook, you can just click on Browse Gallery go straight out there, do a search for a Slack related runbook, and you should be able to easily find the Slack runbook that I put out there that enables you to send messages back and forth and issue custom commands. So go ahead, import this runbook into your environment. You can even customize the runbook towards the bottom and add your own custom commands. There's plenty of documentation in there that should show you how it's done. And uh, enjoy automating, and thanks for watching. Again, find me on Twitter at PCGeek86 and online at trevorsullivan.net. Cheers.